are days where sometimes you just have to throw caution to the wind, and today is one of those days. In an era where everything feels so mass-produced, customization can give an object in your possession real meaning. And what better way to add some chaos into your life than to attempt to install custom firmware for the first time. And while each of them does something better than the other, in return, it also does something a little worse. There isn't that one perfect fit, so it took some time for me to decide which one I actually wanted to install. I was interested in Newly, but the fact that it featured the slowest boot time and no quick shutdown save resume function made that a no-go. Min UI is great if you're looking for that simplicity and streamlined look, but for me, it was way too simple. And without Wi-Fi making it impossible to use retro achievements, that wasn't gonna work. I finally landed on Mew OS. I loved the idea of a quick boot time, and it still featured HDMI support and Wi-Fi while also featuring an excellent theme repository. So I began the installation process and was quickly reminded why I've been putting this off for so long. From being unable to format my SD card due to controller folder access restrictions to issues with installing Raspberry Pi Imager, it seemed like everything that could go wrong did go wrong and a 30 minute process turned into a few hours, but I persisted as I was determined to customize this handheld. After finally getting the OS to work, I realized I needed to scrape new system art and that took a few hours as well. After waiting for that to finish, the next thing was to install custom themes. And in the end, was it all worth it? Well, I don't know, I'm not crazy about new OS. I tried many different themes and I finally landed on this one. And as much as I like the front page, as soon as you go into the content menu, you're stuck with this folder-like aesthetic that seems to be prevalent on every single theme, and it just didn't scratch that customization itch. However, I wasn't just going to erase all my progress, I decided to grab a different system and try the modded Ambernix stock OS. And while investigating further into the folder structure, an idea popped up into my head. Instead of searching for a perfect theme, why not just build my own? And that's exactly what I did, and you can too because the process is quite straightforward. I just found a theme that was a good template for a starting point, made a copy of all the files, and began tweaking them. After some trial and error, I finally came up with my first theme. This is called Cypherpunk version 7.4, as that's around the amount of iterations that I went through, and I must say, this gives off its own personality and flair. I wanted to create something that made the RG35XXSP feel like a device from the future, something you might see in a cyberpunk universe. added a ton of little details, as each menu icon, every time you hover over it, it changes colors and a little light lights up on the bottom. From the boot logo to the standby page, it just has a very unique feel. It kinda makes me wish I had the black transparent model, as I feel this theme would be a perfect fit. If you're interested in downloading this, note you must be on the modded stock OS. I haven't done any tests on the actual Embernic OS, but this is how you do it. First, download the link in the description. Then shut down your system, take out your main SD card, which is the one with all the system files usually residing in port 1 of your system, and put that into your computer. Open up the ROMs folder, and inside that you'll find a folder titled Apps. Go into that, then go into themes underscore INS, then 640 by 480, and it's inside this folder where you need to drag and drop the zip file that I provided, and then eject and remove your SD card. Put that back into your system, go into the App Center folder, go to Apps, go into your first card, then go to Theme Manager, and it is here where you will install the theme. Go ahead and press A to install, find my theme, and then press A to confirm the install. Go ahead and wait for a few seconds, and that's it, you got it. There really is something to say about customizing and creating your things. It's like the moment you add your own take to things, it can be as simple as just throwing on a new sticker. Something changes. This thing is no longer just a piece of hardware. It's kind of a reflection of you. So go out there, search for those custom buttons, or find these stickers that really speak to you. And customization doesn't need to be complicated. All it took for me to customize my Nintendo DS was one item. And if you're interested in seeing how this one item unlocked the Nintendo DS's true power, you definitely want to check out that video coming up right now.